morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Okay to see. My sister's going to be coming in later, so we're not. Okay. They're going to be up there for a couple minutes. Oh, kind of cool. Watch. Testing one, two. Here, here. What you going? What you start? I'm gonna wait here. Go in. I'm gonna wait here. Oh no, my face. So come in with me. But I'm, I'm gonna wait here. That's what I do every year. But here it is. It's the name. I I'm going. Yeah. I'll show you. It's a good. It's a good story. So. Listen, I've been going to Episcopal Church since '91.
and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. <coughs> I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from the insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face at my flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me? Let us stand up together, who are my adversaries. Let them confront me. It is the Lord who helps me, who will declare me guilty. The word of the Lord. And I thank God. The psalm today is number 31, verses 9 through 16, which can be found in your bulletin. The psalm will be read responsibly by full verse. Please join me at the bolded verses. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eyes consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted in sleep, and my ears are sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a display to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine on my servants, and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, 
and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Please join in singing hymn number 172, Were You There, verses 1 and 2. <laughs> Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judah, called Israel, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he, so he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb was to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen. When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks you, where is the guest room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it would be who would do this. 
A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, no not, not a thing. thing. <laughs> he said to them, But now, the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, we look here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly and his sweat became like great droplets of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they said, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. The servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the words of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. And they also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Who is it that struck you? 
They kept heaping many other insults on him. When the day came, the assembly of the elders of the the elders of the people, both chiefs, chief priests, and scribes gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you the Son of God? He said to them, you say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard ourselves from the soldiers. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insisting and said, He stirs up the people and our teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, he came to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean, and when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he went off, he sent him <laughs> off to Herod, who himself was in Jerusalem at this time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to, hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests the leaders and the people and said to them you brought me this man as one who was perverting the people and here i have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him neither has Herod, for he has sent him back to us indeed he has done nothing to deserve death i will therefore have him flogged and release him then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, who is for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city, and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify, crucify him. A third time, Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged, and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they had asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed over Jesus as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Serene, who, had, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breast and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nurse. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. 
Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by, watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, and let him save himself. If he is in the sight of God, he is chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanging there kept derailing him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It is now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowd who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breast. But all his acquaintances, including the women who followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed with their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arthemea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rocky tomb where no one had been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with, with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how the body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the commandment. <laughs> Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This is one of those great liturgies of the church which preach themselves. The celebration of our Lord's triumphal entry into Jerusalem is one of the first recorded Christian celebrations. 
Unsurprisingly, it originated in Jerusalem, where early Christians would reenact the time in Jesus' ministry when he finally arrived in Jerusalem. The final week of his life, when he would at last be betrayed, condemned, and ritually slain. In the form of this celebration that we've received, though, there's a tension, a strangeness. We begin by joining the throng in the holy city. We welcome in the arrival of our Messiah in triumph, singing hosannas, throwing cloaks before him, and processing with the palms of victory. How quickly, though, this same crowd changes their tune. In the reading of the Passion narrative from St. Luke's Gospel, we too insert ourselves into the drama, and we again assume the role of the crowd in the holy city. But this time, it is to put the Lord, whom we have just welcomed in, to death. Now, that can't be right. That's not what victory looks like. Victory is cheering, smiling, clapping, rings and Disneyland, champagne and confetti. Not betrayal, not injustice, not violence, not murder. The great irony of today, though, of this whole week, though, is that it somehow is. God's logic is not our own. God knows our hearts. He knows that they are broken, that something keeps us from him. Something keeps us betraying, lying, mocking, and killing. Sin. And now, he will use our sin to save us. Jesus enters Jerusalem in triumph as a king, ready to conquer. And actually, what we thought was discordance is in fact truth. The vicious deicide, the greatest blasphemy possible, killing God, the deicide of the crown will instead become a fitting sacrifice, a sweet savor before the Lord. This is the logic of the cross. It has sustained the saints in every age, despite being as shocking as it is. It overturns our expectations, especially of God, and tells us that our weakness, and the suffering that we know on this side of glory, is not only impermanent, but transformative. God uses what we devise for evil and transforms it into an opportunity for his glory. Holy Week is the time when this truth is most readily on display. And he invites you to participate, to walk each step with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A front row seat to watch how God will use the tragedy of one particular man 
and make it the means to save a doomed race. Come and see them. See the power of God, who can even make death, death on a cross, the way to the fresh waters of eternal life. of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael and our Bishop Daniel. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Montgomery Deanery, the Finance Committee, and Iglesia Episcopal San Martin Episcopal de Tours. Diocese of Guatemala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our President Joseph and his cabinet and staff, for Congress, for Tom, our governor, and for all our elected officials. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those awaiting the birth of a child, especially Dustin and Courtney and Ryan and Molly. And we give thanks for the healthy birth of Steve and Joseph to Alex and Katie. And for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Joel Cairo and Kimberly Dundas. We pray for those serving in the military, firefighters, the police force, and healthcare workers, especially Chris, Josh, Matthew, Keith, Jack, Joe, Jason, Ryan, George, Jared, Andrew, and Roman. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those entrusted to our prayers. Jim, Andrew, Terry, Norman, William, Bev, Teresa, Alyssa, Peter, David, Dara, Rena, Edna, Jeff, Lisa, Lindsay, Ruth, John, Nathan, Bennett, Dorothy, April, Avery, Ralph, Matthew, Jonathan, Sharon, Samantha, Michelle, Kenya, Dan, Kelly, Wendy, Judy, Nate and April, Brian, Michael, Brooke, Anthony, James, Greg, Richard, Lily, Ryan, Fred, Dell. Kyle, Robin, Tony, and Bill, and those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, and that your will for them may be fulfilled, that we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We pray especially for those you name either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory. 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be 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 with you. Peace be
He became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Wherever, Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also. We may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. 
Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Join in singing hymn 168, O Sacred Head So Wounded. <laughs>
eternal God, God and the Father. You have graciously accepted us as living members of the Son's Son, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Set us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Be sure to sing in hymn number 455, O Love of God, How Strong and True. <laughs>